I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, of America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay, thank you. Hey, Linda. Okay. okay. Uh, welcome everybody to the April 28th meeting of the Town of Andover Board of Finance. We do have a lot to cover today, so this this could go long, but we'll uh, we'll see what we can get done in, in the time we have. Uh, we'll make the time available, I guess. <clears throat> Our first agenda item is uh, public speak. Uh, I just want to again remind everybody, as we often do during these meetings, to try to keep it concise to the point. And uh, if uh, if, if needed, uh, we'd, we'd like to limit you to about three minutes. Uh, if needed, we can always come back to you if you have more you'd like to say. And also, as usual, try not to, you know, reiterate too much somebody else has said. Just uh, say, you know, I, I agree with, you know, that person and, and uh, try to keep it efficient. We will have another public speak opportunity at the end of the meeting. Okay, Amanda, do you want to go around and see if anybody has any comments? Yes, okay. First up, we have Kathy Palazzi and Mike Palazzi. I'm all set, My, Mike's all set. All right, thank okay. you. Valerie Bruno. Then Amanda, thanks. Okay, thank you. Carol Lee. All set, thank you. Georgette Conrad. For once, I have nothing to say. <laughs> Thanks for being here. All right, next up, Jeff McGuire. I'm all set. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, Jeff. And last but not least, Dan Foran. I'm good. Thank you. All right, no public speak. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. We will move on to agenda item number three. This is the opportunity where we have we have the opportunity here to add and delete items from the agenda. Do any of the board members have any suggestions for additions or deletions of the agenda? Eric, are you aware of any other business we should be dealing with that's not on the agenda? Okay, Eric's not shaking his head no. Okay, hearing none, let's move along to item number four. This is to discuss and act upon the budget. Um, so there's some things we need to talk about here. Some things have changed since we had our public hearing last week. Um, uh, so the agenda item A1 is to discuss feedback from the public hearing. I, I think all the members, board members were in attendance and, and heard basically what the comments were from that meeting. Was there any other feedback that we received anyone has that they want to discuss? Okay. Item number four, A2, state legislature, municipal funding decrease. Eric, do you want to give us a summary of that, please? Uh, sure, Amanda, can I share my screen? All right, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so you should be looking at a table which says estimated uh, town ECS grants for fiscal year 2022 and 2023. So uh, the, um, as most of you know, the state has not adopted a budget yet. The governor proposed uh, essentially level funding in the same ECS formula as last year. However, the uh, Legislative Appropriations Committee has proposed um, increasing the overall appropriation, um, but revising the ECS formula. So the long and the short of it is if you look at the first a uh, pink column under FY 2022, they're uh, predicting 
a ECS grant to the town of Andover or one million nine hundred and thirty six thousand eight hundred and fifty four. Uh, which is a decrease of $67,928 um, in revenue to the town of Andover. Now, this is not final because the budget is not passed. And one of the questions is, since they did it at such a late date, and most towns have already uh, pretty far along in their budgeting process, would they consider a hold harmless uh, for the towns that are getting reduced? And I had a long... It was a subject of discussion, uh, you know, at uh, the Krog Policy Board meeting today, and we spoke to our, you know, the Krog's lobbyist, and the lobbyist indicated she did not think, uh, nor did, um, you know, Representative Nunez, who was on the Appropriations Committee, did not think they were going to, they, they're not really even discussing seriously a hold harmless. So both of them were pretty sure that this is likely to hold uh, throughout the budget process. But again, there's no adopted state budget. Um, so the best, the best number we have is that compared to the budget we presented a week ago today, uh, our revenue will be decreased by $67,928. Okay, thank you, Eric. Um, so the, just to clarify, hopefully everyone understood that, but the, there was some discussion of what Eric called a hold harmless clause, which is the idea that, you know, hey, what we will do is, you know, these towns that are losing money, we're actually gonna hold off on that and we'll keep the increases to the towns that are getting the increases, but not redo the reductions. But you're saying now, Eric, that it sounds like there's not much appetite for that from what you can tell so far. Yes. Conversations in Sierra Club. Okay. Right. So far, everybody I, we've been able to talk to at, that's part of the legislative process has said that's not going to happen. Um, and as you can see, a lot of our neighboring towns are taking a pretty significant, you know, hit also. But it's, you know, it's up and down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Board members, any questions for Andover here and, and, and or for Andover, for uh, Eric here? I just wanted to point out that this does affect our revenue line. It's not our expense line, but there is a, a, the educational cost sharing line item there. We'll take a look at the budget uh, spreadsheet and how it impacts it, um, you know, in a minute here. No questions for Eric on that one? Okay, it kind of sounds like it is what it is. We just have to decide what we're going to do with it. Okay. Actually, I have a question. Go ahead, Louise. Uh, did they specify um, what the reduction was, or is it a flat dollar amount? Um, there's, there's a formula, right? And it's if you look at the, it, I don't know, Eric, I didn't share this stuff. I probably should have with the Board of Finance. I didn't realize initially they weren't on there. But there's a there's a very specific formula based on your demographics and issues and all those sort of things that actually calculate based on the demographic and the and the town situation that results in that number. It's not something that somebody selects. You know, it's not like somebody randomly says Andover doesn't get this anymore. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I don't I don't have a copy of the formula. You know, I read through the formula. Basically, they're doing a couple things. They're adding more funding uh, to, um, they're increasing the kind of weighting factor for English language learners, um, you know, and they're adding more money to the open choice and some of the magnet programs, um, you know, and VOAG, none of which is really applicable to us per se. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, let's move on to item 4A3, which is the adjustment of the building admin line item. Eric, do you wanna give us a summary of that, please? Sure, uh, we had kind of worked out the numbers before the last meeting, but since we went to public hearing, uh, 
the last public hearing with with the numbers we had agreed at the meeting two previous to that. Um, we've just refined. We I had originally told the board it was roughly a forty five thousand dollar savings by combining those two positions. Um, the actual savings when you when you really account for all the items is a little more than that. So the line item for that position for the building admin position has been, you know, it was just a flat $45,000 decrease. Now it reflects the actual expected expenditure. So that has decreased the town's budget by uh, three or $4,000. It's not much. Um, I think it's closer to 6,000. It went from 45 to 39 something in that line item. Yeah, let me just pull it up so I'm not speaking off the cuff. Yeah, you have 39,301. We originally budgeted 45,000, so it's it's about $5,700. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. So that's that's to the positive. That's that's a decrease in expected expenditures. So partially offsets the bad news uh, we got on the educational cost sharing. And that takes into consideration benefits and everything, right? Well, because it's a combined position and her benefits are already encompassed in the town clerk's position, the only thing it, it adds to the benefits, it, it accounts for the contributions to Social Security and accounts for the additional contribution to MRF, the retirement package. So it doesn't account for additional health care benefits because it's just one person. Other questions uh, or comments, discussion on that item? Okay, let's move on to agenda item 4A4, which is to finalize the budget for the town budget meeting. So we've got some new information today that changes our picture a little bit from the last, uh, the last uh, meeting we had, which is the public hearing. Um, we have a net increase to our expected costs of about $61,000. Um, so we have to decide how to treat that. So Amanda, can you let me share my screen, please? Go ahead. Okay. Oh, let me show you the right one here. Okay. All right, so this is just the department totals um, and there's some notes over here on the right. Um, this is probably a little tough to see if you don't have a large monitor, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So two line items changed. Uh, the first one is in the expense uh, option or the expense line item here um, for the building department. Um, excuse me, let's make sure I went through, going with the right one. There it is. So the uh, building department line item, you can see this in the department summary total. This originally was, uh, oh, I can't remember where we took this down uh, somewhere. I think we allocated a little more money, but this, this uh, expenditure item is at uh, 39,301. Whereas previously it was at about 44,000. $43. So yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's probably, it's a little more like $5,000, not $6,000. So uh, there's about a $5,000 uh, decrease in our expenditures on this particular line item. Everything else in this is, remains the same based on what we presented at the public hearing last week. And then the big change is actually here in the revenue column. So in the revenue column, we have... Um, Educational cost sharing is this line right here, okay? Uh, we'd originally expected, you know, roughly about $2 million. Let's pop over to see the actual amount. Yeah, the ed educational cost sharing was about, expected to be about $2 million, 
uh, well, it's the same as the uh, previous fiscal year, so it's right there, 2,004,782. And we've got that reduction to 1,936,854. So those are the two line items that have changed in this, uh, in this uh, budget here. Um, the rest of this are notes. So what's the impact right now? So we were looking at last uh, budget, <clears throat> we were looking at a percent mill increase of 3.43, um, estimated mill rate of uh, 36.83. With this new information, it takes us to 36.97 would be the required mill rate under the current budget. So taxes would increase uh, by that amount. Uh, the percent mill increase rate increase would be 3.83. So I think we as a board need to decide how to handle this change uh, and finalize the recommended budget to be presented at the town budget meeting next Thursday. Uh, it seems to me that we have roughly, I guess, three options, three main options. One is we reduce the uh, budget for the town or, or AES or, or somewhere both uh, to accommodate that $67,000 decrease in revenue. Um, we can let this tax increase stay where it is. You know, the, the calculated tax increase, it takes it up to 36.97 mils. Um, or we could assume, which was kind of what I was hoping I'd hear something different from Eric, but we could assume that the the state led is going to come through and actually do uh, something around that hold harmless clause and not make any changes to the recommended budget. Obviously, the risk with that last option is that the state doesn't take any action around that, which is kind of what Eric is hearing. And then we would have to handle that uh, differential through some type of contingency uh, funding. Uh, to me, that's not a wise option. I think we have to be a little more conservative in how we approach this. So I, I would think that we either need to reduce uh, our expenditures um, or we accept this uh, mill rate increase as it is uh, calculated here and pass that on to the town uh, or we do a mix of, of both. Um, so, and just a reminder of the process, you know, once we pass on the recommended budget to the town we do not have the opportunity to increase it. Uh, at the town budget meeting, we can only change line items and do an overall decrease to the budget. So that being said, that's, that's kind of my piece. Um, any comments or questions from the board? I think, this is Diane, um, I think we need to find a place to reduce this and live within our means. And the only place I can think of getting it from is from the school AES budget. I'd like to hear what everybody else thinks. Other comments or input? No, well, like Diane said, this is Dave. There's only two line items that have any significant cuts. And it's AES and it's a trooper. And we've talked about that before. Yes, we did. We're looking for a net of about 61. 66, roughly, yeah. Oh, 66. Yeah, so yeah. I thought the it's, two it's, changes netted out. Um, <clears throat> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's uh, 67 was the reduction against a, about a $5,000 savings, 62. Right. So the one thing is, if, if we're really talking about this budget, I mean, this budget overall, in terms of the actual total expenditures, you know, our year over year increase in, in expenditures is about 120,000, you know, on a $12 million budget. So we are 12 plus million dollar budget. So for the year, year over year, in terms of uh, expenditures, we're up less than a percent. Um, you know, I get that, you know, trying to explain to the taxpayers, 
you know, because the taxpayers are going to feel a much bigger increase, but it's not really a, an increase in expenditure um, overall. Yep, understood. It's, it's the it's the decrease in revenue plus the pulling less out of contingent. I'm um, not contingency. Sorry, out of balance. Sherry, uh. what's up? Sherry, go ahead. I have a question. Um, Eric, where are we showing the $319,000 grant that the town got for the American Rescue? We're not because first of all, only half of that would come in this upcoming fiscal year. Okay. Um, and we can't use that to offset taxation. So no, I understand that, but I, I just wanted to know, you know, how that's do, a good point. You know, we how should do we show that we should certainly yeah. put that on the budget message. Explain that a little more, Eric. So we are, uh, you know, according to the American Rescue Act, um, or American Recovery Act, or whatever you call the thing, Andover mm -hmm. is slated at some point to get two allotments of money. Each one will be around one hundred and fifty-nine or one hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars, but it's it's money that can be spent for very targeted things. Um, and what you absolutely can't do is use it to offset taxation. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is in the federal government still has not released the actual rules for expenditure of that money, at least as it pertains to things that are of interest to the town. Like there, we know there's some things we can spend, like we could give money to our town businesses um, legally. We know we can do that. But what we don't know is what town stuff we can spend that money on. We're going to be able to spend a fair bit of it to do some good for the town, but we frankly don't know what the rules, the, the real rules for its usage are going to be. Um, so what's your level of confidence that we could use that money against any of the line items in our budget versus something that we haven't considered spending money on? <laughs> I mean, the only things we, there are some things we could potentially spend it on, depending on how liberally or how narrowly they define categories, we're allowed to spend it on broadband infrastructure, water infrastructure, and sewer infrastructure. If they broaden the category, you know, sewer infrastructure to cover septic systems and things like that, we could potentially use that money for relocation of the main septic tank that covers the town hall in anticipation of putting a community center in. We could use that to pay for the AES septic repairs that need to be done. Um, if it's, if we have a really broad definition of, you know, water infrastructure, maybe we could use it to pay for the sprinkler system for the Veterans Monument. Um, broadband, it's possible we can use that to put a VoIP system in for the town. It's also possible we can use that to fund, I know the Board of Ed had to pull back a request for, uh, a, you know, an updated Wi-Fi system in the school. So all these things are possible. We just honestly don't know at this point. It's kind of maddening that they haven't put out the rules yet. Um, you know. But none right. of that stuff is in our current budget, so to speak. It would all be future projects. Correct. Correct. So it doesn't get us out of this little quandary we're in right now. Not that I can see. I mean, are there some things? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess you could maybe reduce money in the building fund and think that some of that expense you could shift. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, if I knew, I would, you know, strongly consider that, but I, I don't really know. 
Eric, what about the trooper? Um, can we reallocate any of that expense to that that grant, perhaps? I don't think we can. We can't allocate. See, here's the funny thing: we can pay premium money for some reason. We can't pay employees salaries, but we can give them bonuses. Basically, if you look at what was actually in that bill, you're allowed to pay essentially, um, uh, for lack of a better term, a COVID bonus. Like a contractual, contractual amount, maybe, um, in, in the way of security or safety, that kind of thing during COVID. Yeah, like you're like, for instance, they give the example of if you wanted to give your firefighters or your EMT personnel a, you know, a premium or shift differential during that period for having to have dealt with COVID patients because of the increased mm -hmm. risks, you could clearly do that. Right. Um, you know, but I, I just, you know, I feel like we're really hamstrung because we don't know what the eventual rules are going to be. I yeah. mean, I'm sure we're going to be able to spend it on something. I just don't know what yet. I've just been um, researching what a couple other towns are doing, and they're allocating some of that money to the troopers um, dealing with COVID-related instances and also with um, the town fire department kind of thing, the, the EMTs then whatnot that are getting called out on COVID calls and that kind of thing. So I just bring it up because I know a couple of towns are going down that avenue and somebody must have gotten some okay from somebody at, the, at that level to, too much. in order to do that, you know? When you say trooper, it's probably the town police department, though, rather than a state trooper like we have. Right, right. It's a town. Ours, ours is a flat fee. There are no additional funds that we would have to pay due to COVID-related expenses, at least with the trooper. Is that correct, Eric? That is correct. So we can't, it's kind of hard to argue that there's COVID-specific related costs there. Mm -hmm. What, what well, nothing, nothing. Worth a shot. Just, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. It's worth a shot, you know, yeah, out I, as an I, idea. You gotta think about these things to, to yeah. get the point. I'm yeah. thinking out of the box. Exactly. Sure. Eric, nothing that has anything to do with uh, with the educational costs for related to COVID in this particular grant? No, I mean our unfortunately our elementary school, you know, didn't get any grant funding through that, as far as I know. I mean, Val can give you a uh, more, but you know, we kind of got screwed on that. Um, and, and this is specifically for town costs, not educational costs. Well, um, the specific infrastructure costs you talked about or support costs. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we could sh we could potentially, you know, maybe backfill one or two of the things the school wanted to do but couldn't. But you know, again, I don't know. I mean, I, I can think of a couple things that we potentially can spend the money on, but I'm not confident in telling you what that is until somebody comes out with an actual set of rules. Right now, the rules are like three lines, water infrastructure, sewer infrastructure, broadband infrastructure. What does that mean? You know, yeah. um, I know it's something that both cost council of small towns um, and CCM are, you know, trying to weigh in on with their legislative, you know, with their lobbyists trying to get as liberal a definition as possible to make it as flexible as possible. But whether they succeed or not, um, I don't know. I wish I did. That's a good question, Cherry. Okay. Um, so we, it doesn't sound like you're confident that we, we'd be able to apply any of that against our current budget line items. No, in fact, we are, you know, that is the one thing that's made absolutely clear in the act 
is that you, you can't use it to offset existing taxation. So well, it has if we were to be smart, we'd be budgeting for these extra COVID costs anyway. So to me, it's kind of a moot point, you know. I mean, yeah. record saying that if we we're smart, we're doing that, and you know, we'd be lucky to get the additional funds and we use them appropriately. But anyway, that's that's maybe anyway, it is what it is. So Valerie, do, do you have any insight into maybe school line items that you know might? be applicable fall under this? Um, I actually can sit with Eric and go over. I, I'm, I'm actually the opposite of Eric. I'm 100% confident that, that, that there's going to be places in our current budgets uh, to be able to spend it. I've done this twice already with ESSER grants because we got Corona at the beginning and then ESSER one and two. And, you know, it, I actually was able to put through under air quality control. It's all in how you word it, boys and girls. Um, I was able to put in um, air under air quality control to get air conditioning in the preschools. I know Sherry's like, yeah, so people said you'll never get it through. I did because of the age of the children, the heat, and the fact that they were uh, most likely not to wear masks. And it went through. And so, um, you know, I, that Sherry knows she's good at it. I'm good at it. I've done this a couple of times now. I'm 100% confident that um, we could get that 319, whether it's in the town budget, the, you know, town, whatever, school. I, I know that between the three of us, we could take stuff, Mark, that exists already in this budget and get it covered. I'm 100% confident of that because we've done it already, uh, actually three times, SR1, SR2, and Corona relief and got in everything that we asked for. Um, I did not get a single one of those grants sent back for revisions. We, um, you just have to be creative and you also have to keep in mind, they want you to spend this money. They don't want it back. They seriously on the state level are giving this money to us so that we do come up with these ideas creatively and spend that money. And, you know, you just have to be a little creative, I would think. So there's a the two of us. Sherry, they all had in there also, Mark, the, the goal is obviously it's given to the town. So mm -hmm. not that you can't use it for the school and I'm not asking you to, but the mm -hmm. goal is to spend it on things that benefit the town. So I know that there's a, a rider that's gonna be in there that's with a lot of them where you can use it. Um, anything that's going to increase or get you back to your um, levels of tourism, um, which includes mm -hmm. signage, which includes right. increase to the bridge because that's right there by, um, you know, the walk that everyone uses, to the museum, to the library, um, public places, things that benefit the community. So Eric's right that they haven't given us, you know, that final document yet as to, you know, what's there. Absolutely. But I know Sherry and I have done this a number of times with other grants, and I've never had to send money back, and I've always gotten them approved, and has, Sherry has as well. So um, I am confident. That, that we'd be able to use it. Oh, oftentimes too, it's social services and anything that deals with community um, health and wellness, which would cover AHM costs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there is always something, Mark, that you can get through there. So once that, once that guidance comes out, um, you know, if, if it comes out and, and Eric's stumped it all, um, there's Sherry. And then if they were looking for another mind, I'd be willing to help figure it out. But, you know, I, I'm sure- what, What's the mechanism? Um, for this grant funding? What do you mean mechanism? Um, I don't know for the town. Ours goes through e-grants, so I'm not sure. My I'm, point is you have to apply for it and then you're awarded it, or do no, you have to- they, they, give you, they give you an award amount and they say, this is what you're entitled to. Now fill out the grant application and give us your narrative. And in the narrative, you give um, a budget summary, budget by object. You tell them what it is you need it for. Um, if it's one big project, you write a SMART goal um and every grant's a little bit different and they do give you an opportunity mark if you do submit something um to say yep yeah, nope that's not gonna fly and then they tell you why and it, it gets sent back to you yeah. so but, it, but it's um, an application it process you've got a limit cap eric that's kind of your understanding you've got an award cap and then you have to yeah. basically put in an application to this right and no i don't think so actually i, I think from my reading, they're going to give us the money. Well, they've allocated. Then we have to yeah. justify our expenditures. 
So they're going to put that money in our account. Um, but then, you know, we have to document, to document what we spend use. it on. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, right. that's kind of what I was getting at. Either, either way, there's documentation, either before they actually cut the check or after they cut the check. Sure, but if, you know what, if that money's in your account, I would think it's a little bit, you know, it, it's a little less risky than if it's, <laughs> you know, somebody's got to actually approve a, a wire transfer somewhere, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any reason. I, it's not that we're not going to get it. It's just the the details of what exactly we can spend it on. I mean, it's not like we don't have an enormous amount of needs, you know, that are outside what we can effectively budget for. You know, the, the town has plenty of things it needs to spend money on. I mean, I would happily spend that entire $160,000 if they'd let me um, working on town culverts, you know, because I got at least a million dollar unmet need for funding for that, and I don't have the money to address it. Well, um, you know, if our culverts on operation, it's going to be hard to bring in those tourists. I'm just saying. I, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, and if we have to put signs in the culverts, even better. Um, so, I mean, it, it's it's it is really frustrating not being farther down, not having more clarity in what's budgetable. Um, you know, that's. That's just me. Is there a breakdown of the ECS grant cut that we're looking at <clears throat> between the regional and the elementary? No, see, ECS is funded, is given to a town. Yeah. So there's no breakdown, right. it's by town. Um, so we get a total of $2 million and whether how we choose to spend that is our own business. Um, so it's kind of divorced from the actual, from the, the revenue side and the expense side are pretty divorced in that case. Okay. Have we received this grant we're talking about in previous years? Or is this really the first year that this is uh, on there? I'm just wondering if there's a line item in the revenue for it. Uh, no, there's not. This is something that's completely, in the end, Last year, we got, I think, a total of $31,000 on the town level in coronavirus relief funding, um, of which we haven't spent much of that. Um, but, you know, you've, you and the Board of Selectmen have already decided to spend that on, you know, the, the uh, monument um, upgrade projects. Um, so uh, I'm just wondering about from a from a mechanic standpoint of the budget. Um, I was trying to see whether where it would land. And and the other thing you have to decide is you you we typically don't in the town budget list the completely separate funds like we normally don't in the town budget account for town aid road, even though that's money that comes in and money that's spent on the town side. And we don't necessarily account for all, at least in the town's presentation, we don't normally, you know, deal with the grants and the other revenue by the elementary school. So, you know, just we've never really done that. Maybe we should going forward um, and we could if we so chose, but we, we haven't typically. You know, my inclination is that you, you show all of your inflows and outflows. You're saying town aid road really doesn't appear on there. And, you know, it's, it's something we pull in and it's something we spend, right? So. That is true. That is true. And I've always wondered that. Um, that's always been accounted for. That's always been a, essentially a... Considered a walk. Not, been accounted for in that manner. Doesn't mean you don't account for it. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, just something for future thought. I'm not sure that we want to muddy, muddy the waters on that with this year's budget. <clears throat> so 
I'll just propose to the board that it sounds like there is an option, depending on our appetite for risk, that this wouldn't be approved, that we could in add a line item to the revenue side for this grant uh, in some amount up to and including, what is it, 139,000? 159, I think. Was it, th it's yeah, 319 it's, cut in half? Yeah, it's 319 divided by two. Yeah, so. 159.5. Right. But if you show it on our current budget, what expense would be a legitimate expense that we would be offsetting? Or is it gonna be future stuff that's not even well, in the budget? Well, that, that's, the, that's the question mark. And obviously, you know, trying to think about how we, we're all talking about being creative. Maybe there's some creative budgeting that we need to do. Um, some, I, I hate to do the budget this way, but some sort of unspecified category we, we throw it into. You know, well, it doesn't. It doesn't benefit us to add another expense category. I think we would. No, no, revenue it. side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we just put it in as a grant, whatever the name of the grant, official name of the grant is. We had a revenue line item. It's kind of done that. What What is the name of the grant here, Eric? Uh, I think it's American Recoveries Act grant. American Rescue Relief Funding. That's probably closer to the exact name. <laughs> I'm going to call it ARF, A -R -R. ARF. They actually use ARP, but I always think of like the, the elder agency of ARP, but um, that's what they actually use on a federal level is ARP. We might as well mimic that. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just, uh, you know, I can throw this up there. Now, if we put it in in the revenue, but it's not, you know, specifically earmarked for a particular usage on the spending side, do we once the once we get more clarity on where we can use it and the grants start getting written, the proposals get written or whatever it is, do we need to kind of go back as a board and approve allocating it out? I mean, are you just assuming you're going to use that money to offset taxation? Is that what you're? Well, to, to me, that's a that's just a non sequitur argument. I, I don't really. I mean, I understand. I understand probably why the language is inserted, and I'm certainly not a lawyer or a legislator. But you know, they're probably doing that just to prevent towns from just. They're probably it's probably some kind of effort just to prevent towns from like increasing their spending just because they got this money. Um, so, you know, but I mean, the reality is if you have these extra expenses, you know, you're, you're generally going to account for them in the budget. You know, maybe not something like a tourism enhancement project or something like that. Maybe that would be extra. Maybe that's what their intent is. Um, but, you know, it, it seems odd to me that you're going to have a lot of municipalities just you know, coming up with these different projects to promote infrastructure. And it may, maybe it just really is a stimulus package in that sense. But I, I, I don't know. I mean, when you put it in the budget here on the revenue line and then all the numbers come out, we are using it to offset taxes. So we'll set the mill rate at a lower rate. <laughs> This is how money works, though. This I mean, is yeah. how money works. Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> the end. The end number is zero, right? <laughs> so you you take in your stuff and you you know well it, unless it goes into a fund, right? You're you're done expended, but you know ultimately you, you're still going to have an offset in taxes. It just depends on what you do with your expense side, right? You know, if you rate if what we're not doing here is we're not increasing our expenditures strictly because we have this extra money. And maybe that's kind of what their, the legislature's intent was there, um, but it's not clear to me. Uh, I think that that's 
kind of a semantics thing almost. Maybe I'm maybe I'm all wet on that one. Um, but you know, to me, ultimately, you are offsetting taxes, or you know, that you would have to add in to if you were to increase your expenditures, the amount that, that this grant. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, I look at it a way to accomplish some things, you know, that we can't afford to budget for. That you wouldn't normally do in this budget year. Yeah. Right. Yep. But that's just me. You are the board. Well, you know, I think not being given any more guidance, unless the guidance is pretty clear and we're just taking a liberal approach to it, uh, interpretation of it. Um, in essence, by adding this in here, whatever we spend above and beyond this budget for a special project next year will be offset by this money because it's not going to be it's not going to be raised by taxes because the mill rate is going to be reduced. So, if you just put this into the budget with the intention of reducing the mill rate, then you know, you're, you're making two assumptions. You're making the assumption that you can apply, you can find some project that's actually funded that you could pay for with this instead of what we were budgeting for. Um, right. You know, and, and you're saying we're not gonna do anything outside what's in our current budget, which, you know, maybe the way you wanna go. I, I'm, I mean, I'm not telling you that's a bad thing. I'm just telling you that that is the repercussion. I mean, imagine a world in which we had clear guidance and we knew that we could use 159K to throw at culverts, you know? What might we do, Eric, is we might cut our culvert budget and then reinsert the money we were getting, but we can't do that right now because we don't know exactly where it's gonna go. We or have- we just offset that 67K we lost through educational cost sharing, which, you know, you could argue that our clearly argue that our, our educational costs are higher than they would be because of COVID. And I know that's not the purpose of this grant, or at least that sounds what it's not like. And you could just increase the bridging culvert spending for the, by the, uh, the additional amount, you know, $90,000 there. Or, or maybe we, or maybe we take some middle road. I, I don't know. I think if we're going to take the risk, we just plug the number in here and let the numbers fall where they are, and we'll figure it out next year. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where I'm starting to go with it, and I, and that's why I asked the technical question of if we just throw it into the revenue, um, and then we get the guidance in, we get the grants written and whatever. <clears throat> when it comes time to spend it, do if we need to take any further action as a board, like let's assume the budget passes, we get through that. Um, and then, you know, we get clarity on where we can spend this money. Um, you know, do we need to come back and say, okay, we're now going to formally allocate that stuff to this, that, the other thing. But remember, if you're wrong, there's a $160,000 shortfall, you know, shortfall in an already really tight budget. Yep. So that's going to hurt. The size of it. We can always find... Uh, other ways to spend it, to take it out of where we put it and reallocate it. The, that yeah. happens all the time. We can probably find an acceptable use, but Eric's point still stands. If we take it out of another line item, we still got to make up that amount. Well, my thought process is that we need to find out what it is that we need to spend this money on or can spend this money on. So I'm willing to do some research and call around and, and talk to um, people who are in authority, just like we have on the school side, people are program managers of certain grants. They know and they can tell us. And then I could have something emailed to me with a variety of ways to spend it rather than just sitting here guessing what would be good and what not to be good. I yeah. think that would be a, a worthwhile conversation to have. I think it would be most useful if the people you talk to are in similarly situated towns, rural towns that don't have city sewer and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, that are similarly situated, that have the same sorts of, that at least when you look at this thing on its face, mm -hmm. are looking at the same hurdles. Sure. But 
and I agree that's a worthwhile exercise, but I'm going to point out from a practical standpoint, <laughs> we have a week. You know, we, we have to have a budget tonight, unless we're. Well, I understand that. I'm just well, saying. Right, so. I'm just saying if we want to just go and yeah. and put this where we want it, and then reallocate or adjust it later, um, there's time. Yeah. To do that. Do we have um, anything further on the audit? Has there been any finalization there? We're closer, not, but there's no change. Pretty close, but um, I haven't heard <laughs> anything. But um, the number we have to work with isn't changing. It's not getting better. Let's put it that way. No, it's not what I was really getting at. I, I just, you know, I was thinking about it from the standpoint of, you know, if this drags out or it's a disaster scenario where we're wrong or something, that we still have some fund balance that I am loath to use and except in case of disaster. Um, but I was just trying to think of, you know, where we're at. We're using a little fund balance this year, kind of the last time around to, to plug holes in our capital budget. And that's going to leave us with what, 10, 11%, right? After we do this in terms of our savings. Yeah, not a lot. Um, if we're still ten percent, if we're still above the ten percent target, we may have some play. Is kind of what I'm saying. If if in the, any absolute worst case scenario, which again, I kind of, I kind of have to think that ultimately, Sherry and Val are right. We're going to figure this out. I just, mm, I'm struggling with it too from the standpoint of budgeting when you have this question mark. Well, um, one thing we could do is take a middle road. We don't need to allocate. We don't need to assume that we're going to be able to apply all $159,000 against the projects we're planning. You know, maybe, maybe we could also just say maybe it's 50000 you know, maybe it's twenty five, maybe it's hundred. So there might be a middle road. And then if it turns out we have an opportunity, we get the 159 k we figured out that there's more ways to spend it. We come up with some creative stuff. You know, we, we, we put in a, you know, lavish water fountain at the Veterans Memorial Park or something, you know, that, you know, that, that's all, uh, that, that's all a positive, right? That's all a net. Okay. Are we still talking about showing this grant as a revenue item? Okay. Just using any expenses. Just so you have it, this yes. is what came from Office of Fiscal Analysis at the state and this, the, uh, um, you know, kind of use of funds. Um, workers who perform essential work or provide grants to employers with employees that provide essential work. Um, you know, government services to the extent of lost revenue from the public health emergency, which is not applicable to this town because we haven't really lost any revenue per se. Um, you know, and investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, but that's a pretty freaking vague, you know, um, and I'm sure there will be a lot more detail, but we just don't have it yet. Well, I'll also point out the language in the next section that says it includes the following restrictions. Mm -hmm. So it clearly states not just reduce taxes directly, but also indirectly. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I think to think that you can just apply this to the budget legitimately is, to me, does not seem correct. And I'm not sure there's not some kind of budgetary gimmick we can do to make that happen. There may very well be, but... You know, I'll make Sherry sign that one, not me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> mm. Mm. I mean, the word indirectly is yeah key. problematic. Yeah, I mean that yeah. changes the character of it. Yeah, makes me less comfortable than I was before. Yeah, that's not great. I, between March third till the last day of the fiscal year in which the funds have been received, spent, or returned. So June 30th next year. Yeah, just means uh, the next budget year. Between now and the next budget year. Yeah. 
I mean, it's a little frustrating, and, and this is where you get into semantics. It's like our taxes are going up, regardless. But yeah, it's an offset. I know I, the indirect. That's that's concerning to me, and I almost wonder what town attorney would make of that, or. Uh, I mean, the town attorney would say, wait for guidance. Yeah, he's I know. too vague. <laughs> I know, I know. I work with attorneys. I'm very familiar. Right. I, I mean, you, you may very well be right, and there may be, we may be able to just plug this directly in. We very well may be able to. It's just a question of what, you know. I guess the other option, which I don't love either, I'm just sort of brainstorming here, in order to deal with that language is if we were to cut the capital budget by a certain amount and then say whatever we get from this grant, we'll try to throw it capital to make that up later. I don't know. I don't like it either. I'm concerned with initial feedback we got on the budget is there was a lot of talk about the capital and kicking the can and the roads and you know the trees yeah. and everything and i don't know if we cut capital that people are going to vote this to go to referendum yeah i know that i was surprised by that those comments in the last meeting i mean Mark's on mute. people get that yeah <laughs> I mean, it's reality we have done that um but so yes, we have, and we years. have capital needs. Eric talks about all the time. We have this backlog. Right. Um, How about the community center? Well, that too. Think with the community center. Well, we only have that money put aside. That's for the benefit of uh, the community, uh, making well, it better. I would hope that all that we're doing is for the benefit of the community. But I, I know, but I mean, in particular, what yeah. are we loading into uh, that capital fund this year? We're adding fifty thousand dollars, but we're already spending fifty thousand this year. You know, in this budget cycle, so we're oh, just keeping it status quo. So, no, I guess that going right. forward, and you know, we're probably not going to be breaking ground on that next year, by the way things move. But there no will problem. probably be things with the community center that we can use the, these grant funds for, like the relocation of the septic if it's broad enough, solar. You know, we're going to put, so I don't know if solar would even kind of qualify in that infrastructure. It's but, odd to me that they didn't include power infrastructure. Um, right. Because that's, that's clearly. Too. I mean, um, yeah, the water thing just seems so. Antiquated. Oddly, <laughs> oddly yeah, narrow. It's it, it oddly narrow. Water and sewer, yeah. You know, oh. and, and that's been a, a, a huge topic of discussion among the town administrators because they put in one word, water infrastructure. Can we spend that on culverts? Is that only water supply? Can we pay for that to drill wells? You know, probably, maybe all of the above. You know, I don't know. Maybe we could give it to Alpoa. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I don't. It is frustrating to be at the point this far along in the budget process, know you're getting money and not know what you can use it for. Um, we wouldn't be talking about this if they didn't cut our educational cost sharing. Right. <laughs> well, maybe we should have been anyway. Uh, Propose that cut anyway, but. <laughs> yeah. Right. Can I, mean, I that's, say that's, something? That's, oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, um, we know we've gotten the town aid roads. Can we use that to offset something instead of this ambiguous grant? I mean, we're spending out on the roads, right? So we spend a hundred percent of town aid road money on roads. Oh. I know. I'm just trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I guess I'll say that given the language that I just read, I'm uncomfortable personally uh, budgeting, adding this as a revenue line item to the budget this late in the game without the ability to further explore. I think there's a probably a very good opportunity for us here to do something that we wouldn't have done otherwise, but I, I'm not sure uh, given the language that, uh, that I'd be comfortable 
adding that line mm -hmm. item in, which is obviously different than I thought a few minutes ago, but uh, I'm a little- Mark, I agree with you on that. Um, I'm thinking more that it's gonna cause more confusion because it's gonna be a lot of questions. Maybe if the hearing is, you know, what can we use it for and all that? And quite frankly, as far as submitting this to the town, you know, the budget the way it is right now, we've kind of gone around and around quite a bit and we've kind of gone bare bones. My thoughts are to present it the way it is without that extra money in there and see what the town says. If they can, if we can reduce, hopefully we'll get some feedback from them and us, because we're them, to um, determine where that reduction will come from. That's my thought on it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Louise. I do think we can mention in, when we present it to the town that look, it's not, this is not in the budget. Somebody may ask, look, this. You may have heard we, we are going to get some grant money from the feds. It's not in the budget, and here's why. Yeah. And right now, we just don't feel comfortable bringing you a budget that includes this because of the ambiguity, and then move on yeah. um, without yeah. trying to say, belabor. Yeah, and say later that if we get it, it's a plus. Right. Yes, and anything we can do to defray, I'll try not to say offset, uh, you know, to benefit our town, you know, pray yeah. off that, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating because I, I, just, I, I just think of like money is fungible. It's so dumb. I know. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, but because I mean, honestly, every town would do the same thing. You guys were just contemplating, just plug it into the budget and reduce taxes, which is exactly the opposite of what this is designed. It's designed to be a stimulus package. Yeah. Just to reduce taxes. But I, I, and again, and, and that's fair if you were talking about towns doing that to literally reduce taxes. We're, we're trying to defray a tax increase. <laughs> We've already got coming. Uh, you know, it's a little Good of a point. Not, to me. That's sure a you're not a lawyer there, Rob. <laughs> I worked with them for 20 years. They rub off on me. What can I tell you? I think the language is all right. You know, Your Honor, I see a distinction here. Okay. <laughs> This is distinguishable, um, but no, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I, on the other hand, I, I flip I flip up a little bit on this. You know, it's our job as a board to try and do what we can and bring them a budget that that is workable. Um, well, it's we're not bringing the budget on the CCS curveball. Uh, it's really no. late in the game. I think we had something. I, I think we were more or less comfortable to go to the town with, and now we're looking at this sixty two thousand dollar problem. I have a question. What does it cost us to do a referendum, to do a vote? Because I'm, I'm, I'm fully expecting it to fail the first time. Well, I think probably if I were to guess, Diane, what's going to happen is it will fail at the budget meeting um, and it won't even go okay. to referendum, referendum and it will okay. come back to you um, in a couple of weeks to try again. But I mean, I could be wrong, you know, but, I, I, you know, it's funny because I feel like we had this conversation before the meeting started that people seem agitated, the whole COVID thing, everybody's on edge and people are picking on things and there's just a lot of, I hear a lot of disgruntled people out there. Um, just to, to, to try to answer the original question, I thought, didn't the referendum cost us about 2000 bucks? Yeah, I think two to 3000 is probably a realistic number. Because remember, we still have to send out an official notice. So we got right. a mailing cost and then we got a cost for all the poll workers, you know, and we got to get our memory cards updated. And there's a bunch of, there's a fair number of expenses you wouldn't think as part yeah. of that. I, I remember it costing, and, and my number is probably out of date. Is it, it, It's probably, like you say, it's probably higher now. I remember it being about 2K, but that was years ago. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if it was two and a half, three thousand to run a referendum. Um, so it's not nothing, but it's also not eye popping. Uh, we obviously want to try to avoid taking something to a referendum that we think is going to fail. But I think it's a good point to point out that a lot of the times, if, if it's really a tough budget, a comfort, controversial budget, it doesn't make it out of the meeting. Right. And then we'll know, right? I mean, we'll have some guidance that, uh, you know, obviously that can change one meeting to the next, but then that does give us some guidance about where the real, you know, feeling is. I mean, I think we, we know where some of the, some of the angst is in this budget, clearly. Um, but mm -hmm. it just depends on 
and what the appetite of the uh, of the residents is for this. You know, it's yeah. Yep, it's a hard call. Yeah, Linda, you have any thoughts, Dave, about uh, the idea of passing it on as is? I don't think it'll pass, but um, I don't know what to do at this late date. So I think it's as is. Well, we, we could reduce our expenditures. I mean, I, I have a problem. I, I'm uncomfortable cutting more, um, well, really anywhere, but cutting more from the AAS budget. We already took a whack at it and we don't really know um, specifically what it would do. It's a, you know, I think, and we, we cut like 40 some odds so that now we, now you if you threw it all on AAS you, now you're up to 100. Um, if we go to cut it out of the town budget I'm not sure where we find it. Uh, you have to take it from we, capital. I keep coming to come back to the capital, capital budget yeah. which we uh, which we've been we shorted the capital budget last year. And we've heard as I think it was Diane pointing out surprising how much or maybe it was Louise how, how, how much people felt commented on that in our last our public hearing and other meetings. Sorry, Dave, did you want to add my, anything? Yeah, my comments, um, the same as Louise, just kind of, I think, go as is. And uh, if the town shoots it down, then um, I have no problem looking at some line items uh, yeah. to cut. Um, kind of off topic, I just wanted to make a comment on that uh, money due to the COVID relief. Not really similar, but in my business, we had a chunk of PPP money. And in the beginning, we didn't really know what to do with it. So I just kind of let it sit there in a fund till we you know, got some guidance from the SBA. It was ridiculous trying to get rules and regulations. So as a town, we should probably do the same thing with that money. Don't spend it before you know you got it, basically, right? Yeah, just let it sit there until we get some clear clarification of rules. All right, so it sounds like there's some appetite to take the budget as is with the changes that reflect the reality of the likely educational cost sharing reduction plus the uh, more clear number on the uh, combined position uh, savings uh, and maybe just roll that into the recommended budget. Any further discussion on that? I just want to piggyback on that and just say that, you know, I, you, you use the word, well, likely reduction of ECS, you know, given that that's not final, we're budgeting intelligently. I think you, you do budget for that bad scenario, uh, but it's not a guarantee either. Um, yeah. And do we have any sense for the legislative time frame on this, Eric, from the state, on when they may actually enact that? I mean, sometimes <laughs> they drag this way out. Um, you know, well, the only thing, not right now. <laughs> yeah, the only <laughs> thing you have going for you is you have a, a Democratic governor and a Democratic legislature. I mean, part of the question is, you know, the governor wasn't really too excited that the the legislature added a ton of money to the ECS. So, so that you know, the total appropriation for educational cost savings um, went up $180 million. So they added a lot of money to it, but then they changed the formula enough that it negatively affected us. So they're actually putting a lot more money into it. We're just not getting to take advantage yeah, of it. Yeah, they're, they're refocusing where it's going. Um, but, or at right. least that's the proposal. Uh, right. You know, the sausage gets made in the, when it comes down to, to assemble the votes to pass it. Uh, and I, I know in the past, and this is a bit of a third rail, and uh, there was a year where this dragged out so long. We had finalized our budget, and months later, the legislature finally got around to doing what they were going to do. And we actually got lucky that year. Um, right. I don't think we can count on any such thing, but I, just sort of in the back of our heads, remember, you know, that's not a done deal. Yeah. Okay. Right. So and just so that we're all clear, you know, we're talking about basically a 1.36 mil increase 
um, if we go as is right now with the spending we've outlined. Am I correct, Mark? Let me get to the right page. What did you say, Eric? 1.36? Yeah, 1.36 mil. Went from 35.61 to 36.97. Um, yeah, once I take this grant out of there that I just popped in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have 3.83% increase to 36.97 mil, right? Correct. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to make sure we, you know, we're both working off the same, yep. uh, same sheet, you know, and that represents basically a 0.9% increase in the actual budget, a total of a 0.9% increase. Which by the way, was a question I got hit with today that I didn't have my, uh, at my fingertips, uh, reporter for the river East called me. I was trying to get that particular number. She had the raised by taxation number, but not that. And I said, oh, off the top of my head, I don't remember. Yeah. But I knew it was low. I didn't know it was that low. She called me too. I wondered. I was in a meeting. So. I told her, and I, I told her, I was like, Mark just got back from Germany, you know? I and had I said, it. I could have given it to her. I can look it up for you. I can get back from you. She's like, well, my story's due in 43 minutes. I said, well, okay, I'm at work. <laughs> yeah, it was the same for me. Okay. All right. So well, that's the answer. Yeah, I, I think we do. We think we do have the. Uh, we're on the same page, Eric. Um, this is, uh, you know, this is what I have um, based on that taking out that grant that I popped in there to do a little what if. Um, but it, it does provide an estimated mill rate of thirty six point nine seven, which is a three point eight three percent increase over the current mill rate. So that is where we are uh, by adjusting the educational cost sharing to the likely level and then clarifying the or cleaning or more accurately depicting the savings from the combined position. Yep. Okay. So that being said, um, we can discuss further or somebody can introduce a motion related to this uh, budget. I move we take this budget as is to town meeting. Okay. To I to, second that. To, to clarify your your you are motion the motion on the table is to uh, recommend the town budget that was presented at the last meeting with the with the addition with the correction of the combined budget plus the reflection of the sixty seven thousand roughly decrease in the educational cost sharing numbers right. Consider that a friendly amendment. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Are stating that properly. Right. Yeah, I think it's clear which which budget we're talking about. Yes, absolutely. The modified budget with those two changes made. Okay, that's that's exactly how I think we should state it. That's better. Thank you. And then Louise, you seconded. Yes, I do. Okay. Do we have any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, I'd like to call for a vote. All those on the Board of Finance in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Do we have any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you, everybody. That will be our recommended budget to be presented to the town meeting next Thursday. Okay, let's move on to our next uh, agenda item, which is item five, which is the town administrator's report. Eric, the floor is yours. So I'm not gonna give a, an administrator's report for this one, just because I think it's gonna be a long meeting by the time we get through everything we need to get through. So I think we can hold off and I'll give you a, another one next month, unless there's specific questions. Yeah, does anybody have any specific questions for Eric? Okay, I guess that's uh, that's good then. Thank you, Eric. Okay, that takes us to item six on the agenda, which is the finance department uh, report. 
Um, number one is the town budget summary, 6A. Okay, so before we start, does anybody have any questions on the budget summary for either myself or Sherry Holmes or Sherry? Are you going to share, Eric, or? Uh, I was, well, what I was going to share, um, if people didn't have specific questions, is just, uh, I went through the town budget um, and I identified all those areas, you know, based on what we've expended so far, where I think we're going to be over in those areas that I think we're going to be under. So um, going down the overages, um, there's some you know, fairly significant ones. We can talk all of them uh, about them in general, but the bottom line is if, if you add up everything that's an overage, you, know, you come to a total of somewhere around $150,000. And if you add up all the things in our budget, and that $150,000 includes the Board of Selectmen's desire to transfer money to uh, spend on the Veterans Monument from the COVID relief funds, um, an amount of $20,000. And it also includes um, what they had, and you and we had talked about, which is a transfer of money from this year's budget into the tree work permanent fund to offset because we decided not to put that money, the increase back in uh, you know, next year's budget. So with those two items in, that comes, you know, our total number of things we're over on is about $149,000. Um, and on the other hand, if you look at the areas where we're underspending the money. Sorry, that should be uh, underages, <laughs> not overages. Yeah, I was going to uh, say. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Brad. I was confused too. Overages. Yeah. Um, I just had a heart attack. Thank you. Um, so the the total amount of money that we're talking about, where we've underspent, um, is as as close as I can tell, somewhere around a hundred. Um, and 80 or 182 thousand dollars. Now there's going to be other small things. This is going to go up and down a little bit, but, you know. But this is the broad categories of the big things. You know, we haven't uh, spent on. So the good news is, and this does include contingency. So if you look at the difference between the overages and the underages, um, at this point that means we're spending roughly 10 thousand of the contingency money just to even up the budgets. If we take those two, if we do do those two things, we're talking about the, you know, spend the money on Veterans Monument Park and the transfer to the tree fund. Um, wait, so Eric, hang on, hang on a second. So the net between these two is roughly $32,000. And then you're saying, that but that thirty-two thousand dollars includes pulling ten from contingency. Well, actually, it includes eighteen thousand from contingency if you think about it, because I'm putting all of contingency in in here in the underexpended because we haven't spent anything from contingency. So okay. we're basically at this point it looks like we're going to be spending around eighteen thousand out of contingency if we do those two things that both you and the board of selectmen have asked to do. Um, you know, that means we're, our margin of error is down to about 32,000, something okay. in that range. Okay, but that's helpful. Um, and we, you know, give or take that amount, if, if nothing else changes terribly much, that's sort of what we're looking at um, for kind of our end of year uh, result. Yeah, somewhere in there. I mean, that could change. That's, you know, me spending, you know, five or six hours going over the budget. So, I, I'd certainly welcome uh, Sherry uh, checking my math on that. 
Um, yeah. we, Marina and I had talked about this today. Um, and we're going to sit down next week and go through the rest of the expenditures, including the Board of Ed um, expenditures, making sure everything is recorded on both sides and reconciled. Um, and then um, we'll be able to give you a truer number um, at the next meeting in May. We had talked about having a firm number as far as where we feel that we're gonna land. You know. Yeah, that's the one thing that could screw my calculations is if there's something big that hasn't been actually inputted into. But I think, yeah, I think you've pretty much put everything into. I think so, but there's a couple things we had talked about today that I want to make sure get in there and accounted for. So sure. consider this very preliminary. Um, yeah. But you know why I'm trying to zero in on this is that if we actually end up having $30,000 lying around in contingency. I can't remember last year if we had much left in contingency and what we did with it, but that's also potentially found money. If, so last, um, last, last, year at the, last year at the end of the year, we transferred the majority of our remaining money uh, into the permanent funds so we could right. essentially roll it over and not have it hit unexpended fund balance. Um, right. But you know, I think we probably could safely, you know, do the transfer to tree work. Um, you know, you know, and, and I know you've, you've talked about that and the Board of Selectmen has talked about that. Um, so whether you do it now or you choose to wait a month or two, the advantage of doing it now is we do a little better with the tree service because right now, most towns in, mo in the state are waiting on the next fiscal year. Most people have blown through their tree budget. So right now they have time and availability. Um, so there's some advantage to having the money now, um, but it's not a, you know, it carries some risk. I mean, personally, uh, given the amount of play we have there, I'm comfortable with it. As long as nothing I, I, bad don't, I don't think we're going to suddenly find that there's 30,000 bucks in expenditure we didn't see coming. Well, we just broke a public works truck that was, you know, uh, 50 something thousand dollars. Oh, thanks, Eric. You know? There's an awful lot of things that could break, you know, that could come up with a big bill. Uh, yeah, okay. Just don't break anything else. That's my intention. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So it, it sounds like, Eric, what you're proposing is that we would need to make that motion to, uh, to transfer some funds to the tree work uh, fund. So you at, at the uh, meeting about the re last regularly scheduled meeting about a yeah. month ago wanted a uh, we're considering a motion to do that. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I didn't have my act together to give you exact line items, you know, where it's coming from and where it's going to. Um, so you have that information now. If you choose to do it, you can make that motion now or you can wait. That's. It's kind so of your fault. You were proposing moving it from the computer services fund 100 01 1095 to the tree work fund. Correct. Correct. I thought we were taking it from COVID funds. Not that. Not that. Um, okay. No, because we pretty much accounted for all the COVID funds dealing with the, uh, the Veterans Monument. So we're taking it from the software implementation? Correct. Product? Okay. Correct. So, well. So in essence, about, we have less money, yeah. What about the fact that we talked about um, that the school paid for the software and okay. we were going to reimburse for 50%? For we're still not doing that or I'm just wondering. 
because <laughs> we um oh we've been we we've been the full thirty four thousand is what they pay and um they were expecting to get back half of that. And that hasn't really actually been part of the conversation. It might have been the original plan. I haven't heard that. Okay. It was just kind of they wanted us to recognize that they the, the school had borne the burden of the entire software mm -hmm. uh, cost. See, I wasn't here or part of the conversation, so I'm just yeah, I, I you know this is when I'm researching and talking to people, and you know I don't know. I'm just trying to get a handle on what it should be or shouldn't be. That's all. So I think with that educational cost sharing stuff coming in higher and sticking it in the budget, we have to leave it the way it is. We don't have any extra money. Yeah, it's a different budget year, but what are you are you suggesting that we don't touch the contingency fund, Diane? So that's really kind of what we're talking about in a way. No, I mean, I'm saying I don't think we have money to reimburse the school 50% for the software. Mm -hmm. They were, I thought they took that money out of excess money from COVID savings. I can't remember, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I oh, thought that was coming out of last budget year we were talking about spending money ahead of time and that was one of the items we we can keep that out right now Sher sherry's right that that was the conversation but diane yeah you you're 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 okay with that i don't want to interrupt you guys but go ahead with the conversation and well i was going to ask you kind of what your take was on it anyway so right no, she was right to ask because she's right. In our notes, it said that we were waiting for that as well as $4,000 reimbursement for computers and stuff um, for the cost of the merger. Right. She's absolutely right. That was in the notes. So and the reason why it didn't get done was because there was no account number in the budget. And so we made sure that we set up an account number now for that $30,000 and made sure it was identified because that was the missing missing link. Sorry, that's my dog. You had made the um, decision and the motion and everything to transfer that money, $30,000 into the budget and to be earmarked for the software um, system or whatever you want to call it. And, but it didn't get done because by the previous employee because there was no account number that she could identify for um, to bring it into the budget that way. So now we have set up an account number and brought it in to where it should be in the budget. Sherry, so now the, the town still owes you the $4,000 right. that we've agreed yeah. to. And yeah, Marina told me the other day she never sent it, but Right. I was assuming that the town had paid that you know, know. a while ago. So, so, so let's put okay. that let's put that part on hold because, uh, you know, Eric, give me and I'll be in Friday. Give me and Sherry a chance to look through because if we can do without it and and just gift that thirty four to the town, we will. So Sherry's right. That's what it says in there that that money's supposed to come to us but we haven't quite gotten to where you are, Eric, with this list yet. Sherry and I are still working on overages and underages. It's underages, if that's even a word, underages. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't need that, um, give us a week so that we don't do it. But, but if we don't need that to survive between now and the end, then we will gift that to the town as part of something already paid and not ask for that back. So give us a chance to look at that. Um, but Sherry is absolutely right that Laura had left that written in there that that's what we were waiting for. So. Right. And, and the other thing at some point we're going to have to come to terms with is that the town has budgeted for the whole cost of paying the auditor. Um, and, you know, for whatever reason, two years in a row, uh, the school has reimbursed us half the cost of the audit. And but 
I don't have any documentation as to why you've done that. I mean, you have done that. Nice. <laughs> it um, was the budget to be nice. Um, but, but I don't think we planned to do that, Eric, but I do know that we planned to also pay all of Sherry's salary in our budget, even though that was supposed to be split for next year. So, you know, we haven't asked for that yet either. Um, I, I have that in our budget as well. So sure. her whole salary. So, you know, between Sherry's half of the salary, the 30,000 for, or half of the 30,000 for the software and the 4,000 for setting up the two offices, we have covered that and I will sit with Sherry and really try to make sure that we don't have to ask for that back. Is that fair? So as long as Sherry can sit there with the books and make it happen for us um, and we're not in the negative, then, then we won't ask for that back. So, so to summarize, I think that the, the potential proposal in front of us is to move the 30,000 from the software fund to the tree work fund, which is something we contemplated in a previous meeting, agreed that it probably was a good thing, but it, this has um, a couple of risks associated with it. One is that we basically are tapping the contingency fund, leaving only about 32,000 in there remaining. And the other thing is that if the school district was to come upon some kind of shortage, they might need some help uh, covering that shortage. Have I mischaracterized any of that? Nope. Okay. So then in order to take any action, we would need to have a, a motion to make that transfer of the money from the uh, uh, computer fund to the tree work fund. Anybody in the board have any more comments or would anybody like to make a motion to that effect? I'll tell you what, I'm just normally sent the, in the chair's, <coughs> chair's uh, activity to make the motion, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because I think it's, it's probably appropriate and I think it's relatively safe this late in the game, but I'm going to motion that we transfer $25,000, we $30,000. Your motion now they had $25,000 in there, but we'll say $30,000 from account 100-01-0109-735, which is computer services to the tree work fund, which is 100-00-3700-049 for this year's fiscal budget. Okay. And I'll second that motion. Okay, Rob, seconds. Any further discussion on that? Okay, I'll call for a vote um, for the Board of Finance members. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you, board. Okay, we will uh, continue our uh, agenda items there. Uh, Eric, do you have uh, more? Uh, no, not on, not until we get down to, uh, let's see. I mean, we we're basically a town yeah, budget yeah. summary. We took some action on the town budget now. Uh, I don't know that we want to, we need to review the revenue or tire spending over expenditure report. Any, any over expenditures we need to discuss? Uh, no, I mean, I gave you a list of all the things that were going to be overexpended. Um, yep. You know, there's okay. quite a few. No uh, specific authorization that you're saying. Right. But uh, honestly, I don't have my act together to, to uh, say exactly where I want to take each one of these from. Um, and we're in the last quarter. So when we do it, we'll just make all the transfers basically in one big final motion. Okay. Um, is how I would assume we'll deal with it. All right. Any other questions? John, I, can, I can send you this if you would like it. That spreadsheet, you mean? Yeah. No, yeah, I, I'll leave that to the other board members. I'm okay without it. Sherry, go ahead. You have the floor. Um, I just want to point out on the revenue summary is where my focus is going to be right now. 
to make sure that all the revenue um, has been properly recorded. Um, so that report is going to look a lot better. Um, and with that, better how being said, well, when I rec the reconcile the bank statements, um, the bank statements only reconciled through December. And I talked to Laura today, so we've got to reconcile January, February, and March. In reconciling those, you do discover how, what is recorded and what isn't recorded in revenue. And I believe there are some things that haven't been recorded yet properly. Uh, so the numbers actually may change. It's not just- Yes, the, yes. Not just the- So the good. Parity. Uh, and actually what the auditor is requesting need to take a look at and to do um, update the revenues. So okay. we'll have that um, all sewed up, hopefully by the next time you see this report. Okay, good, thank you. I just wanna point out too, just for people who are, um, not, don't necessarily have it in front of them that all of the budget detail the revenue summary we're talking about, et cetera, is all in the uh, Board of Finance packet that is on the town's website. So, you know, we're, we're referring to it as we go through here. Okay. Any other questions for Eric and Sherry? Okay, we don't have any uh, agenda item seven would be budget transfers. Uh, Supplemental appropriations over expenditure reports. We have none. None that I'm prepared to uh, to give you. Uh, so. In truth, I should have them for you, but I do not, and I will readily admit that. Okay, let's hope your over over and under analysis was fairly accurate there. Then me too. Okay, any further questions for Eric and Sherry on the, uh, on the budget, uh, budget transfers? Okay, hearing none, let's move on to item eight, which is old business. Uh, 8A is the software transition. What do we have to report there? We were on a call the other day um, with the program manager from Edmonds, of tech and he wanted to get a feel for um, our chart of accounts, uh, our reports that we would be required uh, to produce from the software. Um, we sent them reports for both sides, town and board of ed. And he has emailed me um, as of today with a list of other items he would like to, us to send them. So I'll be working on that list as well. Um, the, um, I think overall this transition will, will go smoothly once we get started. Um, the actual software is on our server. Um, there's a little bit of tweaking that they need to do so that we can um, have it uh, go live as far as the training base is concerned so that we can start the training on both sides. Um, we're pretty anxious to, to get going on that. They will do the conversion of our data on both sides, town and board. And they also are requiring a list from us as far as the account numbers go, what account numbers we don't want to transfer over which I have a report that I will be sharing with them, all the account numbers that won't go over because they have zero balances and we haven't used them in God only know when. The other um, piece on the town side will be a reclassification of certain account numbers, getting rid of the very detailed account numbers like brooms or stuff like that. And this is to um, go along with the uniform chart of accounts on the municipal side and create accounts that they recognize and everyone else recognizes to be supplies like, you know, 610 and those kind of things, okay? So we're gonna do some reclassifying of that and changing that. I will also build a crosswalk when I'm finished 
doing that with them so that it's an easy transition going from point A to point B. And the reporting should be actually um, a lot easier to follow, in my opinion. It's just, it, it'll be so much better. Um, and so that's what we're trying to work with the um, programmer with. Um, I have to have a conversation about the database, you know, and how that's all going to work um, with them and just verify what their um, direction is going to be in that respect so that we um, get exactly what we should be getting from them. So if there's any questions, I'd, I'd be willing to answer them, but I think that's it for now. We will be on many calls over the <laughs> next several months um, until we get to the point of the training and then go live on July 1st is our goal. That's my goal. And we're certainly gonna work towards that. Good. That well, sounds like some good progress. I know having been through this a couple different times in different points of my career, I know it's a big, big job, so. Mm -hmm. And Eric was on the call and Valerie was on the call. So we were all there right. having the conversation with the, with Eric Leonard, his name is, and he's going to be the program director of this. Good. Right. And, you know, one of the things I think we still need to work out is at least the first selectman and the board of selectmen was very adamant that we end up with a single database that encompassed both. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the problem we're running into is the town and the school both have different tax ID numbers mm -hmm. and they're not really set up to handle a single database with multiple tax ID numbers. And so that's going to have to, we're going to have to figure out a solution. Either we're going to have to compromise, um, you know, and go with multiple databases or they're going to have to figure out how to how to make it work. I don't know what the Board of Finance's feelings are um, on that. Uh, What's the practical result when you say when you say multiple databases, does that mean you just cannot combine the numbers and for reporting purposes? Right. Basically two separate accounts and the right. The IRS recognizes the town with one uh, ID number and the school with another ID number. That's how we do the reporting for the W-2s yeah. and for 1099s. Yeah, and, um, and for the practical purposes, though, for what the selectmen are looking for, you really just can't have combined reports. No. You're going to have to produce separate reports and consolidate them in Excel or something like that. Well, what has been customary in my um, experience is that you have the two databases, one for the town and one for the school. Neither one of you can look at their each other's data. But what you've done is different this time around is that you've hired a finance director who has access and is linked to both. So my point is, if you want to bring transparency, what is going to have to be is that we request, a re um, if you request a report of the Board of Education, it's up to the Board of Education to approve that report, you know, moving forward. I can, you know, work with both town and board to make that happen. So it's a smoother um, transition and it's a smoother working relationship between the two. Um, so that's my hope. I will have the conversation with the selectmen and um, I will explain the situation and how the software company is um, proposing, like any other software company that you would go with, would propose exactly the same thing. And when I first came here and I heard one database, I knew that wasn't gonna be possible. Just right. by virtue of the fact that you have di two different ID numbers, tax ID numbers, okay? And I realized that was I think that was the conversation early on and I was not privy to that, but um, it's just something that we have to deal with and come to terms with. And 
I need to have that conversation with them on this. Yep. Okay. So that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> okay. I will I will get back to you on where we're at uh, on that particular subject and databases when I finish um, having that conversation. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any more questions for Sherry on the software transition? Okay, let's move on to the audit status. I think uh, Rob already asked this question in our budget discussion. Uh, anything to add or? We were supposed to have an audit April 30th because that was the extension was to April 30th. He was gonna take this last extension and then have something to us by then. Um, I have there, not- Is there a butt anything. coming after that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't received anything yet, either way. So it's got I two anticipate days. that he will be sending us drafts soon, I would hope. Um, I certainly can touch base with him tomorrow and send him an email, ask him, where's he at? How's he doing? Does he need anything from us? Because he hasn't reached out and said that he did. Um, and then find out from there where we stand. Okay. Any questions for uh, Sherry or Eric on the audit? Okay, let's, the item 8, 8C is the motion to transfer the funds from the treasurer's office software to tree work fund. I kind of preempted that with, uh, yep. I did that. with the motion earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we move on to 8D. Community Senior Center, Community Slash Senior Center Building Committee. We have an update there. Uh, not for me. Diane, you look like you're- No on. updates. The way we kind of left it, we approved the funds to go out to, for the site survey and conceptual drawings. So it's kind of in Eric's court to get the bids and do that. And I know we're all wrapped up with budget and getting all that stuff done, so. Um, I don't think we're going to see anything until this budget is put to bed and voted on and passed. So, okay. You might, there, I might get the, uh, I'd like to get the RFP out for the survey portion, mm -hmm. um, you know, sooner rather than later, because I don't want to hold that up and that's not very expensive. Um, but, you know, I am, I do have a few other things on my plate. Okay. All right, thanks, Diane. Thanks, Eric. Uh, nothing more on that. Let's, uh, item 8E is the Veterans Monument Park updates. Have any, any update on that? So we were able to uh, bring in a uh, well driller um, take the existing well, um, the upper well at the monument, um, change out the pump in it to a higher capacity pump, and eventually pump through the, the major sediment issue that that well had. Um, it just basically required pumping the heck out of it for a long time. Um, so we're, we're out a total of about $2,900 to rehabilitate that well but it's a lot cheaper than, than drilling a new well. And there's already an existing vault. So now that we know that, what we, the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out you know, how we uh, trench down to the field, um, but, but that's progressing. And we weren't planning on doing that till August. So we've got, you know, or July or August. So we're in good shape right now, I think, in terms of that project. Uh, Jerry um, is raising a lot of money for through the buy a brick, brick program. So I think there's he's probably raised sixteen or seventeen thousand um, dollars, you know, at this point, which is great. And we're you know we're trucking along. That's it. Okay. Thanks, Eric. Uh, last item under old business is 8F, the Building and Land Use Department Online Permitting System. So we've discussed this a few times before. Um, 
so what we're doing is we are switching the building department over to an online permitting system. Um, and we're doing it by just straight passing the cost off to the people pulling permits by adding in a essentially a, an additional permit fee for each permit. And the software company will bill us monthly by the number of permits that the system has, has dealt with. So it's essentially cost neutral to the town. Um, I'm hopefully we've gone back and forth on contract revisions a few times I should have. I'm hoping next week I'll have a contract uh, to sign and we should be up and running. The goal is to be up and running with that about June 1 and transition to online software for that. Okay, anybody have any questions for Eric on that? Sounds like good progress. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Our uh, next agenda item is new business. Uh, the first item under new business is 9A, CIP recommendation for the building alarm system. So there's a lot of text here, Eric. You wanna, some, I don't know, are you in a position to kind of give us a summary of, of this? Yeah, so basically we looked at a total of four vendors of which we got good proposals out of three vendors. Um, and um, the Board of Selectmen asked, sent it to CIP and asked CIP to rank the vendors based on, you know, their preferences. Um, CIP reviewed all the proposals and uh, felt that uh, FPT or Fire Protection Team you know, was the best overall uh, contractor for it. You know, maybe a little bit more expensive upfront, but better long-term costs. The other real advantages to that is that the elementary school already uses FTP for uh, their inspection services. So eventually, you know, whether we, uh, we, we eventually go to a combined bid that includes the testing for the school system. Um, Cause that's the one thing that's not included in, in any of our quotes is the testing portion. Um, this will accomplish what the town needs to do, which is to transition away from TN, the Tallinn Dispatch Center, um, which will no longer be willing to do monitoring and change over to cellular monitoring. Um, you know, the total upfront costs is going to be somewhere, you know, north of $20,000. And it depends on whether we include the Andover Museum or not. Um, there's pros and cons. The CIP was not convinced uh, that the, the uh, service quote for that building was reasonable. So they approved it with it for everything other than that, and then asked me to go back to the vendor. Um, and if it gets through you uh, guys and you actually uh, agree to spend the money, it will go to the board of selectmen. Um, and if they approve it, then it will get done. Um, so so for, for the museum, you're talking about the burglar alarm or fire alarm or both? You're talking uh, about both, both. Um, you know, right now there's a really half-baked uh, homeowner special system that has like a single fire detector um, and a motion sensor, I guess. Uh, but it doesn't really, there's never really any call to the authorities. Like I've gotten random text messages from the company saying that the burglar alarm has gone off in the building. Um, but, you know. Right. So no, I understand, but you're talking about omitting from their quote which part of that for the museum, if I understand. The, the whole thing, Mark, I, I think that what it was was it was a combined bid for that building, and Adrian in particular really thought that, there, that that was a really incongruous part of their quote, like that their their quote for everything else made a lot of sense, and the quote for that building was did yeah, that up. like 13 grand just push, for the museum. He wanted to push back and have Eric go back to them and say, come on, you know, yeah. uh, you know, work with us here and see right. what they do. I right. mean, so the, the, the big question for the Board of Finance is, do you want to approve spending? Because that will, 
you know, currently we have somewhere north of $40,000 left in the building fund. Um, and this is going to tap, you know, uh, somewhere between 20 and 25,000 of that to accomplish that. Um, and what I would suggest, since nobody's budgeting for annual testing um, or the monitoring, that probably what's going to have to happen is we're going to spend out of the $25,000, the, the town will pay for all the upgrades and we'll pay for the monitoring, essentially the monitoring for a year for all the buildings. And then next year when we budget, because then we'll have actual numbers for each you know, we'll put it back on the library to pay for theirs and, you know, the school to pay for their monitoring. But for now, I'm, I'm saying that we just absorb it right out of that fund and be done with it. Okay. The monitoring is not really capital, but... No, it's not. And, you know, and you could try to push the monitoring out on something else. Um, and, you know, it's going to work out differently for each organization. Like for the town hall, our costs are actually going to decrease for monitoring because right now we're paying for two dedicated phone lines. And by the time we get rid of the 70 bucks a month for two dedicated phone lines and go to one cell receiver, you know, we're going to be paying less. We're going to be able to realize some savings. But like several, some of our facilities just use kind of like a pass through phone line. So their alarm shares the same phone line, like for instance, as the library. So the library is not gonna get rid of a phone line. So their costs are gonna go up. Um, so it's, we really gotta parse it out, you know, building by building. Um, but we're not, unfortunately we had to come up with a budget long before we had any kind of reasonable numbers for sure. this. To yep. assign that. Okay. So you have a suggested motion here, which is to approve signing contracts with the uh, fire protection team for up to thirty thousand dollars for the services. I think I thought I said twenty five thousand. That's not what your packet says. <laughs> Oops. No. I think I think they got flip flops. Mark, remember earlier there was one that was twenty five that needed to be thirty, and maybe no. Like, Unless I sent you a wrong, my I'm copy looking at, says I'm looking at page 33 of the packet. The motion to approve has a number of 30,000. Okay. I sent, uh, I sent to all the board members a... Oh, uh, yeah, I see you have 25,000 in the more detailed motion and in, in the email that you had sent. Okay, I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got a little discrepancy there. Yeah, Sorry I just, for the confusion. I, I just want to say for the record that in this kind of situation where you're running comparative costs, especially with it's a different um, upfront versus you know ongoing running costs, it would have been really nice to have that in a matrix where you have each each vendor and then you know, what's the upfront cost, what's the annual cost, rather than having to tease it out of the text. And I, I don't know that that's you or the CIP, but just going forward, it's just much easier to you know trying to sit here and figure it out on the fly. Yeah, understood. Fair right. point. Anybody um, from the board have questions on this? Hi, I'm just concerned. So, if if the if the old town hall isn't included, are we happy with what's there? No, God, no. I mean, what's there doesn't work. <laughs> it, it sounds like what Eric's saying is that they're going to go back and and rebid that piece or push push back on that on that part of the quote. Okay, you're that not, was my... you're not implying that you're not going to have do something there that's in line with what you're doing for the rest of the town. I mean, I would certainly, to me, um, you know, given what's stored in the Andover Historical Society at the museum, I would feel mo more comfortable certainly if it had a working, you know, fire alarm system, but. You know, it doesn't now, um, but, you know, honestly, a lot of our buildings don't really have functional systems right now. So, you know. The insurance guy in me is going, la, 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 I can't hear you. <laughs> um, so, but no, w the intention, yes, is to go and try to juke that bit a bit. 
try to get them to come back, counter counter offer it a little bit, and then hopefully we do get that included, right? Yep, that's my goal. Yep. <sighs> Other questions? Okay, would anybody care to make a motion on this? We do have a proposed motion language in that email from Eric. There is a not quite as detailed motion in the in the meeting packet with a thirty thousand dollar figure, but sorry, Eric, how, how much do we need now? Is it twenty five? I, I think we can get away with twenty five thousand. I mean, we could definitely get away with 30,000, but I think it's doable at 25,000. Um, Including the museum. Possibly, once you get a revised quote. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, so the, as written, I moved, let me just look at the six for a second. Do we want to have anything in this motion that says, you know, pending further discussion with FTP about the museum? Um, or do we leave that out? I think it is. We, let's not muddy the waters. I mean, the first selectman is going to take a crack at this. Eric's going to, you know, I, I think I trust Eric to negotiate a reasonable contract. I think we need to get this done. Okay. Um, but that, that's my opinion. Yeah, I hear you, and uh, I'm okay with that. So I'll move to authorize the town administrator uh, with concurrence of the Board of Selectmen to expend up to $25,000 from line item 100-00-3700-052, building maintenance fund to hire fire protection team for fire alarm, cellular monitoring, installation, repair, monitoring, and annual inspection services at the Andover Town Hall, AES, library, fire department, and public works. And you want to add the Old Town Hall Andover Museum if can be handled under that budget number? Oh, okay. So that's what I was kind of asking before. Um, yeah. Sure. If it can be done under that number, yes, absolutely. We should add that. Yeah, correct. So maybe and or uh, the Old Town Hall slash Andover Museum. Correct. Yeah, makes sense. Anybody want to second that motion? I'll second it. Linda seconds, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, let's vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Do we have any abstentions? Okay, motion passes, thank you. Okay, let's move on to our uh, next agenda item. That is item 9 B, request for funding for the Planning and Zoning Commission to hire a consultant to develop an affordable housing plan in accordance with the new state law. So Eric, you've got a uh, fairly complex, well, maybe not you, but the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, or maybe this, I guess it's town of Andover. So you have a contract for preparation of the affordable housing plan. Right, so, so let me talk you through this and I'll tell you, um, you, you as a board may or may not be comfortable pushing this forward right now without it going to RFP. Um, your guidelines really say this should go to RFP first, yeah. um, but the Planning and Zoning Commission is essentially asking whether you would be willing to sole source it um, for kind of two reasons. One, um, the town has a really good history um, with Bill Warner. Um, in fact, Bill Warner and I wrote a grant that produced most of the data that's going to go into the affordable housing plan um, about six years ago um, that we funded and then paid Bill to, uh, you know, to do the actual work for. And the reason why I think it's worth going with Bill on this one is because he wrote our last plan of development. Um, our last two plans of development. And he did an affordable housing study on the town. 
So he's probably in the best position to put together to put together now our, our state mandated plan. Um, and so on that basis, the, the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission asked me whether I would ask you whether you would consider sole sourcing it or whether you want this to go to F, you know, to uh, an RFP. Yeah, just to just point of terminology, sole source basically means you're only going to have one vendor do it, which is going to be the effective thing here, but you're basically asking us to skip the bid process. Correct. Yeah. So uh, looking at the uh, at the budget for this, the total budget is $6,900. And you're saying that in your opinion, and probably in the, I guess, in the opinion of the Planning and Zoning Commission, that they're, they don't expect that going out to bid is going to result in a lower cost for this because the efficiencies that Bill Warner would have, having been familiar with the town and the data previously. I mean, I don't think you're going to get a good plan cheaper than that. I'm sure we can find somebody that will make us meet the minimum statutory guideline for having a plan for them not reducing town funding uh, for less than that. But in terms of doing an actual affordable housing plan that makes sense for the town of Andover, I think he's gonna. That's going to be a fairly competitive number. But without going to RFP, I can't tell you a hundred percent sure that that's the case. Just that that's my gut feeling. Um, and to be and, clear, our guideline is five k, right? That we bid uh, out if it's more than five. Um, no, for services in this category, you have no minimum for your guideline. So um, <laughs> if we were paying him a buck. Technically, we would still be supposed to be sending this out to RFP. And I think at some point, we, the Board of Finance, once we're through with this year's budget, really ought to take a look at your policies and start thinking about whether they make sense to you and what changes you would like. Because I think that a lot of those policies were put in, you know, under a very different regime um, that had some serious concerns about you know, what a select board um, and administration was spending money on. Um, That's correct. Right. And maybe you have more confidence in me or maybe you have less confidence in me. But anyway, the, 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 it's, it's really your choice whether you want to, because it's a policy, it's not a charter issue and it's not an ordinance. So it's your policy and you can decide to override it if you so choose, but I don't want to arbitrarily override it. You know, that's, that decision is solely yours. Right. You're kind of looking for a waiver here. Shouldn't, if we're going to waive this, shouldn't we have this request in writing from the plan and zoning and their logic set out of why they're recommending this to us? I know Eric gave us a summary, but we still don't have anything written or a written request or something. Not that I don't want to, I don't want to be bureaucratic, but. I think you make a very good point, Diane. It would be helpful uh, for the purpose of the record as much as anything else is to provide some kind of summary that says, look, we've looked at it. These are reasons why. I mean, I think Eric summarized it well, and I'm not averse to doing this, but I do think Diane has a good point about future requests, especially to deviate from policy. If we have some type of summary, you know, it doesn't have to be as extensive as what we had for the alarm proposals, for example, which was you know, well done and detailed, but you know, just some kind of summary about it would help. I mean, yeah, and, and let me tell you that I personally don't have any heartburn with sending it out to RFP. This was a request made to me and I said I would pass it on and maybe you guys would agree to it. And maybe you wouldn't, you know, so I certainly haven't promised them that this is going to fly. That's for sure. I don't know if our chart allows us to go and just decide to go in or out of RFP, but we need to be careful here. Yeah, there is some charter language around that, right? Boy, I was just looking at that not long ago. I think, yeah, we need some more guidance here. Okay. I mean, if you want, we'll just send it to RFP. That's fine, too. 
Uh, just the, the problem is I don't even know if we can do this. I have to look at the charter first before I make a decision on it. About going to RFP? Skipping it. Yeah, skipping it, skipping the RFP. Yeah, I think, I actually think David might be right here. Um, geez, and we should know that. Um, so that may be more of a charter based question. So you reviewed that recently. I was a little surprised by some of that, but all right. Well, I think that, you know, my personal recommendation is like until we have that clarification, um, you know, we, we probably would not authorize it. I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Okay. Which means Eric can just go to RFP and you can, you know, we can make a decision based on that by the time the next meeting rolls around or we can wait for clarification. And if it looks like it might be possible, then we could make that decision. But by the time we get to that point, it may, it may well be faster to submit an RFP, get it wrapped up in a couple of weeks. Okay. And of course, going to RFP does not necessarily mean you have to choose the lowest bidder. You can choose the bidder that's in the best interest of the town, which still allows you if somebody came in a few hundred dollars less, but something was compliant, but we didn't feel that it was in the town's best interest to have data that might be questionable or an analysis that's not as thorough, then we obviously choose the proposal that's in the best interest of the town. Yep, not a problem. Any further discussion on this? All right, did anybody want to make a motion? I'll just note that if we want to hold off on this or, or let Eric do the normal RFP process, then we would probably not make any motion. We don't want to make a negative motion. We only want to make a positive motion to do something uh, different. Yeah, I think we just table it for now. Okay. Yeah, and Eric, you of course go out to RFP and and, uh, and we can also follow up on that afterwards. Okay, I'll touch base with the, the chairman of the commission. Okay. All right, I believe that takes us to, uh, gotta roll back up to see it. <laughs> uh, new business item 9C, motion to appoint Sherry Holmes town treasurer in accordance with the town charter. Eric, do you want to comment on this? Yeah, so so I'm a little screwed up on this. I had it in my notes that the Board of Finance had to officially appoint the town treasurer. It's actually technically the Board of Selectmen has to. So what I would say is motion to recommend that the Board of Selectmen appoint Sherry Holmes as town treasurer to conform with Charter Section 702I. Administrative positions. Yeah, just being said, Board of Selectmen shall appoint the treasurer, shall have all the powers and duties imposed and conferred by the Connecticut General Statutes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, competitive, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. The problem Any is they technically haven't. So, um, you could yeah, ignore I, this too and just leave it in there, but or you can recommend that they do that. I'll leave that to the board. You know, it, there's nothing requiring our recommendation or approval on this in the charter, so we really it's 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 a moot point other than we put our seal of imprimatur on there approving this. Um, so it's really uh, really up to the board. I don't think it's a bad thing to necessarily have done that, but. We don't need to. Okay. Anyone on the board want to make a motion one way or the other? Well, I actually wouldn't do the other unless you want to not recommend. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll move that we recommend that we appoint uh, Sherry Treasurer. Okay, so Rob moves that we recommend that the Board of Selectmen uh, appoint Sherry Treasurer per the requirements in the charter. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, Louise seconds. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? All right, looks like you're in our good graces so far, Sherry. Thank you. Motion passes. 
<laughs> I know. Thank you very much. I appreciate the support. Yeah, I'm counting on you for the grant, grant money, Sherry. That's really yeah. Cool. I'm working on it right now. I'm serious. I'm working on it right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, this takes us to item 9D, which is a school and state funding project. This is really relevant to the educational cost sharing we just talked about, right, Eric? Yeah, I'm actually not clear what that is. Um, I don't think I put it in the on the agenda. I'm not sure what that's relative to, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, it's kind of a summary, I think, of the proposed budget from the Appropriations Committee. Um, and the, it talks about the educational cost sharing formula changes. I think it's just a review of that. Right. You know, it's, it's the stuff that you just you displayed up there is uh, earlier about the, uh, the town by town differential from the governor's budget. And we have pretty much already gone through this. And if anybody's curious about the, I think somebody asked about the, I think it was, might have been Louise about how it was calculated. I think there is at least an overview in there about the weighting factors, how they changed. That's in the packet. Right. Does so anybody have any more questions on that? I think we went, talked through it. The, the, certainly the information is in there in the, in the packet. Okay, hearing no more questions or discussion. That takes us actually to agenda item number 10, which is the approval of meeting minutes. We have four different uh, meeting minutes that uh, are up for approval. 10A is the Wednesday, March 24th, 2021, regular meeting minutes. Would anybody like to motion to approve those? Anyone? Separate motions? Yeah, probably. So we could probably do them all. The other, the other three are Wednesday, March 31st, special budget workshop minutes, the Wednesday, April 7th, 2021, special meeting budget workshop minutes, and Wednesday, April 21st, 2021, town budget public hearing minutes. I'll make a motion. To approve all those minutes? To, to, to approve all four of them. Okay. Anybody want to second that? I'll second I'll... it. Hey, Dave seconds, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, let's go ahead and vote. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, hearing none, motion passes. It was somewhere between one and two in the morning in that last uh, budget hearing. So I'm not sure that uh, <laughs> I was fully there. I contemplated abstaining, but uh, uh, <laughs> I think I'm, I'm probably okay. All right, agenda item number 11 is the liaison reports. Do we have any reports uh, from our liaison members? Well, we already kind of talked about CI what happened in CIP. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have a lot to add. I, I mostly just listened to others give their expertise. Uh, and it was really mostly about that alarm project. So yeah. <clears throat> I don't really have much to add there. No, that's good. Okay. Diane, you kind of talked a little bit about the uh, community senior center already. Anything to add there? Or are we good? Um, she's saying no. Okay. All right. I think that is the summary of our some of our liaison uh, opportunities there. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number 12, which is board open discussion. Does any of the board members, do any of the board members have anything they'd like to bring before the board we haven't talked about already? Okay, hearing nothing, I guess we move on to item 13, which is our public speak opportunity. Uh, Amanda, do you want to go ahead and uh, poll the uh, participants and see who would like to add any comments? Sure, okay. We have a couple people on here. Joanne, ha Joanne Hebert. Uh, okay, number first, I just have one question. 
Unfortunately, I appreciated all the discussion on that grant and whether or not to add it. And I believe you made the right decision. I just wanted to bring forth um, an idea that I didn't hear just in case you guys have to, um, you know, presented by all of you. I could think about that grant. And if, you know, once, once Sherry and Eric do their... Um, Ooh, we're losing you here. Oh, we're having a little hard time hearing you. We're, we're, it's really breaking up. Let me try that. Any better? Much better. Oh, yay. I found the connection. I'll be quick, really. Again, I was just saying I appreciated all the discussion on that. You guys can try. Um, yeah, just stop today. I don't like we're losing you again, Joanne. Yeah, sorry, it's not working. No comment. I'll send it in. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Thanks. Not a good idea. <laughs> okay, next up we have Kathy Plazzi and Mike Plazzi. Um, I just want to say thank you very, very much to the Board of Finance. I think they did a great job. Uh, I know you did the best you could. And I thank you very much for your dedication. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Val Bruno? I am all set, thank you. All right, thank you. And I believe we're all set. Okay, great. All right, next agenda item would be adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Okay, Diane, motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. Rob seconds. Thank you. Any discussion? Bueller? <laughs> no? Okay, hearing none, let's go ahead and vote. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Sounds like done. Motion passes. I want to thank everybody. Um, work's not done, but uh, we move the ball forward a little bit more. So thank you, everybody. Stay well. And thank you. Uh, we'll, you be too. In touch. Uh, we'll see you next Thursday. Yeah, we're going to a reminder that meeting is in person. Yes. Right. So I, mean, I don't think there's any provision for uh, remote participation. Is that correct, Eric? That is correct. Mm -hmm. so, wow. Yeah. So 7 p.m. Are we in the Are we in the uh, gym or are we in the yep. uh, town community the town yeah. hall? Yeah. The gym. Yeah. The, yeah we're uh, in the gym. Gymnasium at the AES. Okay. Yeah. Will people Will people be able to view it without participating? Like a follow up. Recording? Yeah. Follow it. No. Don't know the answer to that one. Oh. We're not these? planning on recording it at this point. Okay. Are you planning, Eric, on doing it live where you would need the view sonic for people to view it live on Zoom? Um, we're not because there's no practical way for them to vote anyway. So okay. it doesn't really matter. Um, I just don't know if we need to set it up. That's all. Yeah, no. If someone would want to view it later, will there be like, there'll be any notes, any minutes? Uh, you know, unless the CVC is there to record it, which I'm not sure about the plan there. I mean, it's the really- I mean, we, we could record, you know, we have the the recorders. We could certainly record the thing um, and upload it. it. It's certainly within our power. The question is what purpose are we serving since, you know- yeah, I mean, it's really- Documenting what happened, I guess is- But the town clerk's yeah. office is doing the minutes. So the minute the minutes will be there. That's really the way that traditionally the results of the meetings have been recorded and and uh, legally uh, posted. So okay, okay, okay. Works for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Be well. Have a good one. Bye, everybody.